Hi, this is Andy, host of podcast, Master of General Knowledge, here today to talk about sealants and caulks. It'll be a general discussion, um, sealants, caulks, typically associated with caulking your siding, caulking your bathtub, RVs, a topic that we talk about quite a bit. They have a tremendous amount of caulk and sealant, your automobile. I mean, pretty much all areas of your life are affected by caulks and sealants. Um, in fact, if we go to Home Depot and you go to the paint section, you're going to find, I don't know, 20, 30 different variations of caulks and adhesives and sealants, you know, and we're talking really more about the caulk tube, the 10 ounce or 300 mil cartridge, 300 mil, mil uh, centimeter, cubic centimeter, milliliter, 300 milliliter tube, um, goes in your standard caulk gun. And, and a, a good question always comes up is, why are there so many different types of caulks and sealants? Uh, and that's that's sort of the, the question that we have and, and uh, from this discussion, hopefully we can point ourselves into a, a direction um, that, that lets us know why we would pick one over the other. I think the best way to start the discussion is to look at the differences between the two main chemistries involved in caulks and sealants. And let's just, I guess, back up one more step. I look at a caulk and a sealant as being similar. Caulking, I think it's an old marine term when they used to wedge uh, a putty material um, I think they used to use like sap and, and tree things, it, it, you know, a long, long time ago and, and between the boards of a boat and, and that would be your caulking. Um, sealants is more of a technical term, I guess, and the idea of a sealant is you are, you know, stopping the movement of one uh, material uh, through another material. You're sealing against an intrusion or an escape. Uh, most simple thing is, you know, caulking on your house around the trims and the doors and the windows to keep moisture from penetrating into the building. Um, so you're, you're, that's a sealant. Sealants are also gaskets, uh, gasketing between a pipe flange or a cylinder head and a cylinder block. Um, but the, the caulks and sealants, again, we're going to talk about 300 mil cartridge or a 10 ounce cartridge. That's sort of the same, same packaging that goes in your standard home caulk gun. So chemistry, the next step. What are the different chemistries? We can break that down into two different distinct uh, uh, chemical processes. The first is uh, reactive chemistry. Um, I guess an, an easy thing to think about is two-part epoxy, which we're familiar with here. Uh, you mix a part A together with a part B. It's called a resin and the hardener. The hardener activates uh, and a chemical reaction takes place in the epoxy and it turns into a, a solid piece of plastic. That, that's a chemical reaction. Well, some of these caulks and sealants behave the same way. The, the best example, uh, and this might be a surprise to you, is, is silicone. Your silicone, one part silicone in a caulk tube, goes through a chemical reaction to make it cure. Um, that's, that's the technical term, it's a curing process. It does that by uh, reacting with moisture available in the surrounding environment. So silicone in its tube where it's sealed doesn't cure because there's no moisture in there. When we extrude the silicone out of the tube onto a surface, there's a certain amount of humidity or surface moisture um, and that reacts chemically with the silicone. And it, I think it's vulcanizing is the, is the process. A vulcanizing process takes place where you end up with a solid rubber. Uh, that's, a, that's a chemical reaction, a reactive chemistry. Um, the other chemistry is solvent-based, and, and water is also a solvent, so we'll consider water in the solvent thing. And, and these solvent-based caulks and sealants, and um, I'm thinking like uh, uh, bath, bath and tile, the red tube there, maybe that's a DAP or something, uh, comes out one component like silicone, but it you apply it and it goes through a drying process. There is not 
a chemical reaction taking place other than the evaporation of solvents or moisture. So we have reactive chemistry and we have solvent chemistry. Solvents dry, reactive chemistry reacts with a, a chemical reaction, creating a, another component or another third, third product. Typically, typically the Solvent-based products are less expensive, and in my experience, uh, these solvent-based products don't last as long because the solvent continues to dry and evaporate out of them over time, which leads to shrinkage, and they typically become brittle and crack. Uh, so if it's not the best, why would people use a solvent-based caulk? And one, one way to identify solvent-based products is that there's usually, if you read the label in it, there's xylene, uh, uh, thinners, uh, different type of chemicals that you'll hear. Aromatic solvents are in there. Uh, we'll get a tube out later and take a look at it. Uh, so these solvents evaporate and dry, and it doesn't last as long. The benefit, one benefit is these solvent-based products, the solvent actually acts similar to a primer. It actually helps it bite into the surface of the materials that you're sealing. Uh, and that can help if you're doing, you know, the products aren't prepped well. I, I see it a lot in manufacturing of, of RVs, at least in the past, they would use these solvent-based products. And I think one reason is because you don't have to prep the the surfaces as well as you might with a reactive chemistry. Um, and, you know, the, the solvents are, are, are seem to be less expensive. So so that's that's where the solvent-based products come into. And I'm going to include that as water-based products, like uh, the Alex Plus caulk, which is a good product. I've used tons of it in, in my construction years. Um, and uh, there's a great place for that, that material. Um, the other reactive chemistries besides silicone would be urethane. And uh, urethane is another moisture curing component. Though both silicone and urethane can be cured with a hardener um, if you have a two-part silicone or two-part urethane. But the ones that we're talking about in the caulk tubes are one part that come out of the tube and they react with moisture. When these convert into a rubberized material, uh, urethane and silicone are similar. Ure urethanes are typically a high, higher durometer. They're, they're harder, they're firmer. Um, but these, these reactive uh, chemistries last longer. I, I think you get better performance, better solvent resistance, better aging. Um, and I think, uh, you know, you, you can, you, you're going to spend more, but in the long run, you're going to have a, a better finished product. Uh, might require some more special prep, uh, prep on surfaces to make sure they're clean and, and you have, you know, good adhesion. Um, so silicone, urethane, high performing, typically used in manufacturing, industrial manufacturing, automotive manufacturing, um, solvent-based and water-based caulks and sealants, construction, um, general purpose. Uh, you have to really read the tubes and understand, try to understand which uh, is which. Uh, so that, that's our basic understanding of different types of caulks and sealants. We have uh, reactive chemistries and we have solvent-based products and different applications for different ones. Hope that was helpful and look back, uh, look us up again for additional and more specific um, discussion on caulks and sealants within certain uh, topics like motorcycles or RVs where we might get into specific uh, uh, name brands and products that you would use for those applications. But thanks again for joining us at uh, Master of General Knowledge podcast hosted by myself, Andy Newton. Look us up on the web, www.masterofknowledge.com. Offer comments and suggestions. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks.